Martin, welcome. Welcome. Thanks for being with us. Wow. Wow. Okay. Here you are with your friend Scout. Why don't you tell our, our listeners about Scout? Uh, Scout is a dear friend. He is 16 years old. He's a full-grown wild golden eagle. And, uh, <laughs> and Scout, Scout is a, a wildlife ambassador for our, our organization and uh, also one of my falconry birds. Yeah, and, and um, you, you've been together how long, did you say? We've been together 14 years. 14 years. Yes. So you guys have really bonded. Yeah, he is truly Scout, a dear friend. Scout is right close to your face with a giant beak <laughs> and, um, and some very intense looking eyes. I suspect those eyes can see very well, much better than us. He can spot a jackrabbit five miles away. Wow. And uh, the beak isn't really what we worry about. We it's worry the, about the, the talons. talons. Yeah. And uh, the audience can see these a little bit. Now, if you can imagine... Whoa. Scout is trying to fly, and well, his wingspan he, looks like it's about six, seven feet. It's, it's a good six feet. Yeah. Um, in those talons right there, 600 pounds per square inch of crushing power. He can drive those talons through my glove and crush the bones of my hand. But he doesn't because you guys are pals. Yeah, he, it's, it's really nice when your eagle likes you. Yeah. That's a good thing. <laughs> Make sure your eagle likes you. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. So a little background. Helen said you developed an interest in wildlife and taking care of injured anim animals when you were a kid. Yeah. Um, ever since I was a very tiny child, actually, I was very terrified of birds. And with the help of very wise grandparents and other mentors, they not only got me past my fear, but I became the first person in North America licensed to trap and train a wild eagle for falconry. Wild. Um, I'm, I don't know that I've ever met anyone who's terrified of birds. That seems like an unlikely fear for a young person. And especially ironic, given what you're doing right now, <laughs> standing, rubbing noses with a full-grown golden eagle. But... Um, why did birds scare you when you were little? Well, it, it actually started a very tiny. My grandfather raised parakeets. Okay. Uh, put my hand in the cage to pet a parakeet when I was about one year old. Parakeet bit my finger. I fell off the kitchen table. The cage went crashing on the floor. There you go. Traumatic. <laughs> that, so that was it. That makes sense. Yeah. So, so um, Helen mentioned that you continued uh, voluntarily caring for wounded wildlife once you guys moved to Utah. Um, so were you doing this out of your house, or what were you doing? Well, yes. Um, when, when my sweet wife Susan and I moved to Utah, uh, there was a great need for someone to care for sick, injured, and orphaned wildlife. I did that back in California. So I offered my services, and then the animals just started coming and coming and coming. And the, the burden got so great that in order to be able to do what we do, we had to start a nonprofit organization called the Southwest Wildlife Foundation. Um, and, and what kind of animals are we talking about? Well, the raptors are certainly what I do the most of, but I've done, I know, come on up. There we go. Woo. I hope he likes me too. <laughs> <laughs> the, this poor guy has been sitting, uh, traveling for, for nine hours in his, in his travel box, so he's a little bit wiggly, but that's yeah. okay. He's doing good. But so, so yeah, we, there was a great need. Uh, as animals started coming into our rescue center, the, it, one of the biggest things that we noticed is that I was averaging about a dozen shot eagles every year. Oh, uh, and it wasn't that the people of Utah hated eagles, they just saw no value in them. And so they drive out through the agricultural communities and say, well, there's a big bird, let's shoot it. Uh, and that's all, the only thought that went through their heads. Is, it, is that illegal? Can you, is it legal it to shoot It is an very, eagle? very much illegal, but that doesn't always make a difference. Wild. Uh, and so, Can I ask a question really quick? When you say, let's shoot it, it was it for fun or game? Yeah, it was, it was just, uh, you know, let's, get, let's, let's shoot that big animal. It's just a target. It really had no, they didn't, it wasn't that they hated them, it's they saw no value. Well, I've been rescuing in Utah uh, sick, injured, and orphaned wildlife. Eagles are my specialty uh, for the better part of, in fact, over 40 years now. For, and plus, I've been doing school pro. Thank you. <laughs> Plus, I've, I've been traveling to the schools and doing school programs and scout programs and community event programs. And because of that, after 40 years of education, I get a shot bird of prey of any kind, um, less than one every few years. Oh, so it's really changed. It really has changed dramatically That's in Southern great. Utah. So the education is working. Wow. 
And, and um, there were other kinds of animals that were coming into your care as well, right? Oh, yeah. We were, we were getting, you know, deer, and we got coyotes and foxes. And just, just to be honest with you, I've wrestled scorpions and tarantulas on up. Wow. So any native wildlife that needs some help, then we're very happy to, to try to care for them and get them put back in the wild where they belong. And so, so over almost 40 years, it must be thousands of animals probably. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, some estimates are 5,000, but I think there's it's quite a few more than that wild. that we've rescued and returned wild. back to the wild where they belong. Any good stories of, uh, of, of someone whose who's, um, outlook you were able to change from not appreciating or respecting the, the, the outdoors to, to sort of changing, bringing them around to your, your way of looking at things? There was one sheep farmer, a sheep farmer that um, basically found a den of coyotes near his lambing sheds. Now, anyone that knows livestock knows that if there's a den of coyotes by your lambing sheds, you're going to either have dead lambs or they're going to be dead coyotes. And so the farmer basically drove over the den, crushed it in, and there was one little coyote pup that was out of the den. Little blind, just uh, about two weeks old. And that little coyote pup, uh, the farmer, he gets $25 a head for every coyote that he kills. The Department of Agriculture will pay him. Well, the farmer just couldn't bring himself to kill the coyote pup. And the farmer called me on the phone, and he swore that if I told anybody who he was, he would deny it to his death. <laughs> but he called me up and says, Mr. Tyner, he says, I, I just can't do this. He says, can you help? And so he brought us the coyote, and we got it raised up and got it released to the wild, far, far, far away from any sheep. And so, yeah, the, it, and it's, the whole point is we don't do politics. We rescue critters. We do educational programs for kids. I didn't move to Utah to tell people how to live. I moved to, to Utah to provide my skill set, my services. And that's, and that's what we've done for 40 yeah. years in Utah. That's amazing, Martin. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so... I don't know if you keep track of all the events and all the outreach you've done, but I imagine, you know, we talked about, you know, 5,000 animals or critters that you've helped to sort of rescue and, and, and heal. Um, what about the amount of people you've been in front of? It must also be thousands of people, right? That, that's certainly in the hundreds of thousands. Hundreds of thousands. You know, I, I average between 100 and 200 wildlife shows a year. And, and, you know, not just schools and scout groups and that, but I, I actually do programs from Texas to California to the Canadian border traveling across the country with scout and my other wildlife ambassadors. Um, basically, here's my, here's my philosophy, guys. If I can get people a cl up close and personal experience with a wild eagle, when they go out into eagle habitat, they won't hurt them. Yeah. And so that's been my goal. Let me ask you two more questions. One is, um, does scout get to fly free? Scout does. I, since I'm the first person in North America licensed to fly a wild or trap and fly a wild eagle in falconry, Scout and I, we go out on the desert, all of this comes off, he flies free, he goes thousands of feet in the sky, flies with the wild eagles. And in the process of him flying with the wild eagles, I look up in the sky and I see two or three eagles soaring the ridges together, and I go, well, I think that's my eagle. <laughs> but it's a little hard to tell because they're so far away. And you always have to wonder what they're talking about. <laughs> To see my eagle cruising with his friends, I can see my eagle looking over his buddies to say, watch this, I have a trained human. <laughs> <laughs> All I have to do is fly out over that guy's head and he'll run out through the desert with a stick hitting bushes, flushing out jackrabbits for me to catch, and I will. Wow. So, so, yes, he is the hunter, and I am his dog. <laughs> <laughs> and when he hunts, he can... You mentioned that his eyesight is so spectacular. So he could, he could spot a jackrabbit, as you say, five miles away. So when they're flying from a, a altitude to go catch a, a jackrabbit, they're going pretty fast, aren't they? Yeah, he can actually dive at about 145 miles an hour. So that's, that's, that's pretty moving. My falcons can do a little over 200. So the falcons are a little bit faster. Wild. Have they ever tried to land on you at that speed? Well, actually, yes. <laughs> uh, many, many years ago, my eagle was soaring. No rabbits to be found. It was time to go home. I have a leather bag. It's called a lure. It's his toy. Tie food on the lure, throw the lure out of the ground. He'll do this wonderful dive, headlong vertical, 145 miles an hour, and he will kill the leather sack. 
which is convenient. Uh, I'll also blow my whistle, he'll fly back, land on my glove for food. One day he got a little confused, thousands of feet in the sky, no rabbits, time to go home. So I blew my whistle, threw his toy out on the ground. My eagle went into this wonderful dive, headlong, vertical, 145 miles an hour. It was impressive, but it became apparent very quickly he wasn't going for his toy. <laughs> he was coming for my arm. When I woke up, oh wow. I was six feet back, laying face down in the dirt, with my eagle standing next to me, looking down at me to say, why are you laying there? <laughs> I had a long talk with my eagle that day, how I could not withstand the impact of an eight-pound bird at 145 miles an hour, and I would wish that you never do that again. <laughs> he dislocated my shoulder and damaged my back and knee. But you see, folks, that experience has given me knowledge. I have a knowledge that none of you have. I have an absolute knowledge of exactly what is going through the mind of a jackrabbit just before an eagle kills him. <laughs> Not recommended, but it's mine. <laughs> That's a great story, Martin. Listen, I, I know, that, um, I know that, that birds in North America are in trouble and under stress and habitat loss and pesticide use and other things are, are putting pressure on all kinds of birds. But it's great that you're out there reminding us that we are part of this community that includes uh, creatures and, and magnificent birds like Scout. Um, I want to ask before we go, is there, you, you said you started an organization. Is, what's the name of the organization? Our, the name of the organization is the Southwest Wildlife Foundation of Utah. And uh, for all of you that have an interest, I do have a book out. The book is called Healer of Angels. And it's 40 years of wildlife rescue stories and the wisdom of grandparents. And the profits from the sale of the book go to our rescue center to help us feed the sick, injured, and orphan animals that we care for. And, is it, and the website, if, if the Southwest Wildlife Foundation of Utah, there's a website where people want to go and see? The website is gowildlife.org. Gowildlife.org. So it's easy to remember. And we, and we have a YouTube channel with lots of wildlife rescue videos. So come to our website, uh, watch our videos, and, and help support the Wildlife Foundation. It's a powerful message, Martin. I really appreciate the work you do, the outreach. Thanks so much for bringing Scout along for, for us to check out. And congratulations. Thank you. This week's winner of the Achievement Award, Mr. Martin Tyner, Southwest Wildlife Foundation, and his friend and remarkable bird, the Golden Eagle, Scout. Thank you, Martin. Congratulations. Hi, this is Nick Forster from E-Town. If you want to stay up to date with all the performances, interviews, and behind-the-scenes footage, click the subscribe button. Thanks. <laughs>